right, so today we're going to be looking at activity 32. We're going to be looking at circumference, area, arc length, and then sector area. All of these are looking still at a circle. So the circumference is the distance around a circle. It's the perimeter of your circle. So they call it circumference because it's a circle. The root word here comes from Latin, and it means around or about, and so it's talking about a circle. That's why they call it circumference. Um, but it's just your perimeter. So there are two formulas that you can use, either 2 pi r or pi d. And so that depends on if you're given your radius, which is your r, or your diameter, which is the d. So depending on if you have your radius or your diameter, that's what you're going to want to use um, for your formulas. So let's look here at the first one. They tell us that we have a 10. So it's coming from the center of the circle to the edge. That is a radius. So we're going to want to use the first formula, c equals 2 pi r. And so we're going to plug in an, a 10 for our r. And so if you use your calculator, you can actually plug this in literally like that. You don't even have to do multiplication. You can do 2 pi 10. And it'll give you approximately 62.8. And our units are yards, because that's what we have here. Perimeter is the same unit as whatever you were given. So if you're having trouble finding the pi button on your calculator, find the 7 button. Go diagonal and then up just a little bit to the left. And you should see it all the way on the left. It's right above the carrot. So that's your little pi button. I prefer that you use the pi button as opposed to using the 3.14. So if you get a more accurate answer. But if you use 3.14, you'll get close to that. It just won't give you the exact answer. So on a computer test, it may mark it wrong. So make sure that you're using the pi button. On the next one, radius is 7.8. Five, so we are again going to use c equals 2 pi r. So 2 pi 7.5 because that's our radius. And that gives us that our circumference is about 47.1 yards. On the next one, they give us the diameter. And so this time it makes more sense to use pi d. So pi times 24, which is approximately... 75.4 kilometers. So that's how you find your circumference. If you know your formula, it's pretty straightforward. You just plug it into your calculator. So now looking at area. That's the amount of space that is inside of your circle. Area is pi r squared. So let's look at this first example. We're going to have a 4, and so it's coming from the center to the edge. So this is our radius. So our radius is 4. So pi r squared, pi 4 squared. And so you can actually plug pi 4 squared into your calculator, literally just like that. And you should get 50.3. And now units are feet squared because it's unit squared. Okay? So that would be finding area for a radius of 4. For this one, it says a radius of 7. So area, again, equals pi r squared. Our radius is 7, so I'm going to plug in a 7 for my r. And I should get about 153.9. And the units would be yards squared. On the next one, it's a little different because they give us the diameter. And if you notice, there isn't a formula using the diameter. So we need to know how are the radius and the diameter related. Well, your diameter is 2 times your radius or your radius is half of the diameter. So either one of those, if I use my diameter as six, I should get that the radius, half of that is three. From there, use your pi r squared formula. So pi three squared will give you 28.3 inches squared. So now looking at this next one, it gives us the circumference. So on this one, we're going to need to go back to our circumference formula. We have two options, and I'm going to show you which one is the better option. So we could start off with 2 pi r, or we could start off with c equals pi d. So the reason that I'm going to tell you there is a better option is because if you're not careful, when you use your calculator, it's going to give you the wrong answer. 
So our circumference is 44. So if I say 44 equals 2 pi, what would I need to do to solve for my r? I would need to divide by 2 pi. And so if I do it as it shows on the board, 44 divided by 2 pi, my calculator gives me about 69.1 for my radius, which is not reasonable to have a radius at 69 and a circumference that's only 44. And there's an issue there because we did not put parentheses around the 2 pi. So it is better to use this formula instead of this one. And if you use the C equals pi D, you get 44 equals pi times your diameter and divide by pi. And so 44 divided by pi gives you 14.00, so 14 for your diameter, not 69.1. So that's why that's not right. So it's better to use this method. However, if you want to use this method and divide by 2 pi in parentheses, that will work. It just won't work if you just do 44 divided by 2 pi all in one, one go. So now, if I know that my diameter is 14, that means that my radius is 7. And then I can use A equals pi R squared, where R is 7. And then I get 153.9 with kilometers squared for my units. So if they give you the circumference, it does require a little bit more work. Start by finding your diameter, then your radius, and then find your area. So now let's look at arc length. So arc length is part of the circumference. So this is very closely related to the circumference formula. It is just a portion of your perimeter of your circle. So your arc length formula, if you look, you have theta. So that's the Greek letter, theta. I write it kind of like a cursive O, but that's how I write it. Some people write it like that. Theta, though, not beta, theta. So theta over 360. Theta is your angle. And then times 2 pi r. Or you can do theta over 360 times pi d. So what do you notice about 2 pi r and pi d? Those are both your circumference formulas. And so it's related to the circumference. So we have the circumference as part of our formula. So it's basically the measure of the angle over 360 times the circumference. So if you know the circumference formula, you almost know your arc length formula. So what we're looking for in this first example is the distance from here around to here. We know from a previous lesson that this angle is 150 degrees, but we're looking for the length. So not the fact that it's a degree measure, but that it's a mile measure, because they tell us our units are miles. So if I were to take a string, which in miles would not work, but if I were to take a string, how long would that string be to reach around this arc? That's what you're looking for. So our angle is 150 divided by 360, and then times 2 pi, and our radius is 14. And so if you plug that into your calculator, you should get 31.4 miles. And so some people have asked, is there a shorthand for arc length? I literally just do that, A-L. I don't know of a shorthand for it, so arc length. Um, but I'm not a, you don't have to write out A-L equals 31.4 but there's not just A or anything for arc length. So when you plug this into your calculator, I literally did 150 divided by 360, and you could even do the fraction. And then I did times 2 pi 12, and it gave me that answer. So you can do it all in one line here. You don't have to do it piece by piece by piece, so it should make it a little bit quicker there. All right, now let's look at the next example. They don't give us a figure, but they give us all the information we need. They give us our angle, our theta, so 60 over 360, times 2 pi and 10. And so if you use your calculator, you should get about 10.5 inches. And so your units are just inches or feet or miles, kilometers, whatever it is, just like with perimeter, because you're looking for a distance. 
the last part now is area of a sector. So area of a sector is part of the area of a circle. So very similarly to what we just looked at, we have a uh, theta over 360. Because we're looking at part of the area, we're going to end up multiplying it by pi r squared, your area formula. So angle over 360 and then times your area. So if you know your area formula, multiply it by your angle divided by 360. So why is it 360? Where is the 360 coming from? It's in both of our formulas, but why 360? Well, that's because in a circle, the angles all sum to equal 360 degrees. And so you're taking the portion out of that total 360 to see what you get. So looking at this first example, what we're going to be looking for is this area. That area right there. So a sector is kind of like a piece of pizza or a piece of pie. You're going to find the area of that piece. So our angle is 60 over 360 times pi r squared. And so if you use your calculator, you should get about 117.8. And units for area are squared, so units for area of a sector are also squared. So 117.8 meters squared. Looking at this next one, our angle is 225 out of 360 times pi r squared. And so if you use your calculator, you should get about 331.8 inches squared. So the most important thing on these is that you practice using the formulas and plugging into your calculator because it's very easy to mess up with the calculator even though you have the formula correct. So on these, you want to make sure that you're practicing with your calculator to get the answer and that you're getting the right answer and not just stopping once you plug it into the formula. It's important that you have a calculator on these for sure. So hopefully that helps you with understanding your circumference and your area your arc length, and your area of a sector.